Now for the third part of this morning's entertainment. Who is it, Derek? Uh, it's me, Adam. <laughs> Come on. Me, Derek doesn't need a microphone, I tell you. <laughs> Hello, mate. Hello. So, what do you think of it so far? It's good, Adam. You're very polite, aren't you? Very polite, yes, Adam. Derek, Derek, shall we tell people a bit about your story first? Yes, please, Adam. So, what happened? How did you come into the world, Derek? Uh, I uh, played the piano. You certainly uh, played the piano. played the piano first. You did, you did. Now, how can I work this thing? Uh, maybe not. I tell you what, maybe I can ask. No, it should be okay. So, Derek, actually, I'm just going to move you slightly so people can see. Okay, okay, just hold on to me there. So this is a picture of you, Derek, when you were, um, f you were born 14 weeks early. So that's about three months early. Yes. And how old are you now, Derek? I am 42. 42, 42. yes. 42. So 42 years ago, uh, incubators were much more primitive than they are now. So Derek, you, there's a picture of you with a giant nappy on that almost covers you. Um, yeah. Because you were so small that you could fit on someone's hand. You were that tiny, weighing just over, just under, just over a pound. I think. Yeah. And because they didn't have the oxygen um, uh, monitors that they have now, what they did, Derek, they used to stick a, a pin in the back of your hand, take one drop of blood, which is all you could afford, put it, send it over to the oxygen machine, which was somewhere else in the hospital, measure the oxygen levels bring it back and adjust the machine. That took half an hour, by which time it was, it was too late. So poor old you had this oxygen level going up and down, up and down. Up and down, yeah, up and down. All of that stuff. And yes. um, as a result of that, it, your, your eyes were affected, weren't they? My eyes were affected, yes, Adam. But that didn't stop you um, from being developing into an extraordinary young baby and toddler full of energy, I gather, from your family. In fact, your family were thinking, how on earth can we, can we occupy the young Derek? So they got yeah. Nanny out of retirement. Poor Nanny. She put up with uh, four of the Parker Bowles children and had retired safely to Hammersmith. And um, they said, Nanny, we need you because we've got Derek. Yes. And Nanny was, she just had the intuitions, you know, of a, a great um, uh, childminder, I suppose, child carer, really. Yeah. And she thought, Derek, you're not doing an awful lot in life apart from throwing everything I put in your hand. So she, she got this funny old uh, Organ keyboard. To, to play, yes. And what did you do with it, Derek? Um, bashed it about, Adam. You did, yes. Yay, I bashed it about, Adam. So Nanny had to keep pulling out the plug to, in case she broke it. But the extraordinary thing was, Derek, you're so clever, was the aged... 18 months to two years old, you actually taught yourself to play it. I taught myself to play it. You did. This is yes. a, Derek's, Derek's been very polite waiting for you to shut up. So here you are, Derek. What did you play? I played um, in D D Dublin's Fair City. You did. And Russell's Adam. So you're going to recreate that magic moment? Yes, Adam. There you go. clicker won't work at all but not to worry because I can go over to the computer Derek so Derek when did we when did we first meet um, Adam we first met at Linden Lodge School Adam we did didn't we just up the road and Derek what happened when we met um, 
I, uh, you have a little girl called Kelly Fletcher. Yep. <laughs> what did you do? Kelly Fletcher how to play the piano, Adam. Yeah, and what did you do, Derek? And I pushed Kelly off the piano stool and started to play Don't Cry For Me Argentina, Adam. You did. <laughs> you did, didn't you? Yeah. Aged four and a half. Yeah. Derek was only about this high and he was, you were very um, lively in those days, Derek. And what did you play? Don't Cry For Me Argentina. I played Don't Cry For Me Argentina. Do you want to play it now? Would like to play it now, Adam. Here we go. So in the end, you came to Linden Lodge School when you were about six or seven, I think. Came to Linden Lodge School at six or seven. Yay. And that meant, because it's a boarding school, that you could, we could have a piano lesson every day, which was, which was really good. So yes. poor Derek used to get up before breakfast. And do some scales. You did. Do some scales. Yeah. And that turned out, you know, lots of... People say, um, people with autism, how do they get so good at things? Well, it's because you like, you like, as Caitlin said, pattern. You don't mind doing the same thing lots of times. And so you did hours and hours of scales, didn't you? Hours and hours of scales. Lots of chromatic scales. <laughs> and as a result, your fingers got very, very fast, didn't they? They did. Yay. Chromatic scales, yay. Magic scales. Yeah. And so, you know, there's a theory, isn't there, that you have to do 10,000 hours or something to get good at it. And you certainly did 10,000 hours, Derek. People think savants like you, that means a wise person, Derek. Um, they, it's like a gift and you don't have to practice, but actually you do. People, autistic people get very good at things because they spend a lot of time doing them. That's, that's the reason. Um, and I think you break through the boredom barrier that most seven or eight year olds would have um, and you don't mind playing this chromatic scales no. for hours and hours hours and hours now derek people often say how do you do it how can you play all these tunes and we say it's to do with perfect pitch don't it's we to do with perfect pitch yes adam which means that every note on the piano every sound in the universe is in your brain, Derek. In my brain, yes, Adam. Shall we get someone to come and help show what it means? We get someone to help to show what it means, Adam. Yeah, can I, can I pick on someone? Um, what about Poppy? <laughs> we can go for Poppy, Adam. Yeah, lucky old Poppy. Poppy's a great friend of Derek. So, Poppy, if you just play any random note somewhere in the middle, yeah. That's it. Derek knows where it is. What about playing two notes, Pop? Yes. I'm going to play three notes up here, then Poppy can play four notes down there. Here's three notes. And then Poppy. There you added some notes. <laughs> Poppy, what happens if we try and play some notes together? If I do that and you come up here and play a chord. Ready? One, two, three. Can you play that? Yeah. There you are. Thanks, Poppy. <laughs> So, that's what it means. That's what perfect pitch means. And it's, 
to people like you, Derek, it unlocks everything. Because it means that whenever you hear a piece of music, you know exactly what every instrument is playing or everyone is singing. Or even if you're on an aeroplane, you know what, an aeroplane. You know what pitch the aeroplane is at. Yes. Now, you, you combine the perfect pitch with the obsessive practice, the interest in practice. And that deep emotional response to sound that you have there. You could hear it with Poppy, couldn't you? When Poppy yeah. played quite an innocent little chord down here, didn't you? And what did Derek do? You didn't do that, though, did you? You went... Because you enjoyed it so much. Yeah. Thanks, Derek. Yeah, I wrote a biography about Derek, and we went around like hay in these places talking about it. And um, every punchline Derek spoiled. <laughs> So I'm used to it now, aren't I? Yes, I do. Right. Good. So Derek, why don't you play one more piece and then we can get the audience to, to um, join in, do some stuff. We can get the audience to join and do some stuff, Adam. Yeah. They can ask you questions. So why don't you choose what you'd like to play and then it's over to you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I would like to choose maybe Top of the World. Top of the World, okay. Can do top of the world, Adam. What style are you going to play it in, Derek? Maybe in Jacob Collier style. Okay. Wow, okay. Yeah. Should be interesting as he uses microtones which aren't available yes, on the piano. Adam. Here we go. What, Derek? Anyone would think they preferred your playing to all our talking. I can't believe it. Yes, Adam. Yeah. Unbelievable. Right. Derek, you've got about 100 people in front of you. Yes, Adam. Do you want to ask them? You could ask Derek a question, or Derek could ask you a question. You never know what's going to happen next. Yeah. Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Who's your favourite pianist, sir? I have a favourite pianist, yes. Um, and it's called uh, Art Tatum. Tatum. What do you like playing by Art Tatum? Um, I like playing Tiger Rag, Adam. Tiger Rag. Now, Art Tatum, for those of you who don't know, was a blind jazz pianist at the beginning of oh, 100 years ago. And it was interesting. When you first appeared on telly about 30 years ago, Derek, yeah. someone from America wrote to me, because people wrote in those days, there was no internet. And, um, and the BBC very kindly used to forward letters on about six months after they'd been written, which was great. Anyway, this guy um, said he'd met Art Tatum and he thought Derek was Art Tatum reincarnated because uh, Art Tatum didn't talk very much. He, he just played. And like you, Derek, Art Tatum didn't know. <laughs> like he heard two pianos play and he thought it was one piano. So he just did all the notes. So Art Tatum, if you ever listen to him, likes a lot of notes. And someone else in the room likes lots of notes, don't they, Derek? Um, he 
Is it, is it you who... No, you cheeky boy, it's you. It's me. Right, hey, here's Tiger Rag, in the style of Art Tatum, Tatum. in the style of Derek Paravicini. What about inviting someone to come and play with you, Derek? Um, I would like somebody to come and play with me, Adam. Yeah! So do you want someone who's a good musician or someone who's a beginner? Uh, someone who's a beginner. Mm. So someone who doesn't play the piano. See, when we do this with John's concerts, 30 children rush out. <laughs> come on. A good musician. Oh, no, 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 no you're, you're very, <laughs> very funny, Derek. Someone who doesn't play the piano, all you, I promise you, all you need is one finger. On one leg. Yay, madam, here we go. It was complicated. Thanks so much. You're terrible at music. Oh, fine. No problem. Right, Derek, this is yeah. going Hi, to be. Hi, Marta. Hi, Derek. It's good, isn't it? You Hi. don't know what's going to happen, do you? Ha <laughs> <laughs> um, Derek, don't say anything. Right, all you have to do is play with me. Right, I'm going to have a cup of tea. And here we go. Pretty good. Pretty good. Derek, shall we invite someone who is a music? Who, I mean, obviously everyone's musical, John. So, but someone who's done more practice than Marta. But someone has done more practice than Marta, Adam. What about? Poppy, would you like to play the piano, Poppy? No, no, she's going to play the violin. Going to play the violin, Poppy. This is completely ad hoc. Poppy walked in this morning, 
And I said, Poppy, you got your violin, that's lucky. <laughs> so Poppy's such a star. Poppy has raised over 10,000 pounds for the Amber Trust, which I think deserves a huge round of applause. <laughs> Derek and I were doing a concert down in Chichester, wasn't it? Chichester. And um, at the Prebender School, is that right? I think Prebender School, yeah. And um, this little girl came up to me afterwards and said, I want to fundraise for you. And that was Poppy. Yes. And you, I mean, you were just amazing, Poppy. A fantastic uh, violinist at the Royal Academy of Music and Marlborough School, and just turn your hand to anything, don't you? So. What are you going to play, Poppy? Um, Oblivion, I think. Okay, so this is unrehearsed, but we'll do it. Okay, Adam. Here we go. Okay. Mm. Poppy, thanks so much for that. I mean, just what, all the things that you were saying, John, about music being this natural language, it's true, isn't it? Because you can you just have this conversation in sound. What's it like for you, Poppy, playing with Derek? It's really amazing to be able to communicate in that way and with lots of other children that I've worked with through Amber as well. Yeah. So Poppy, uh, the, I know there's people from Linden Lodge here. Poppy comes and uh, works on the summer scheme. And um, there's some great um, pictures and videos actually around. It's, it, music really does touch the parts that others can't reach. Thanks so much, Poppy. We appreciate it. <laughs> Derek, I think we've got 
time for a few more comments or questions or requests, or uh, people can come and sing or play if they like. Yes, sir. Uh, maybe re request. I was just going to ask a question, actually, Derek. How do you learn? Do you listen to it many times and then repeat it, or do you listen to it once and then play it? It's very interesting to learn. To, to uh, just play it, listen to it once and then play it? Well, it depends on the complexity of the piece. I've got a challenge. Why doesn't someone with a phone... This is interesting when you do this at school because children aren't supposed to have phones. And I say, just bring out your phone and play me your favourite piece. And um, they, they, they go for their pockets and they realise they're not supposed to. Um, anyhow, um, so if anyone's got a piece that's really quite obscure on, that you like on your phone, I'll show you exactly how Derek learns. It's got to be pretty obscure. Yes. What, what's the piece called? Uh, Fuga di Misterio. Okay, and um, tell us a bit about it. Uh, it's a piece by, uh, this is Fuga di Misterio. Uh, it's a piece by the Argentine composer Astor Piazzolla, who we've just heard. Oh. Uh, and it's one of his lesser known works that's been um, arranged countless times. <laughs> Well done, mate. Okay. Well done, Derek. You know, the, the amazing thing about your musical brain, Derek, is that piece was in E minor, which, which Derek calls G minor, but we won't worry about that. Um, I can play any note, and he'll play on that note. Go on, Poppy, come and play as a note. It's like it's a bit like asking Albert Einstein to do uh, two plus two. But anyway, go C sharp. Play it in C sharp, Derek. Derek, do you want to ask anyone else? Any other questions or requests uh, or comments? Questions or requests or comments? Anybody? Uh, 
Um, yes. <laughs> yes is the right answer. Yes, if you go on to just Google Derek, there's zillions of things. Um, you've done. Um, there's a lovely record called, called CD called Interlude. Yes, Interlude. that's right. That's right. Thanks, Steve. I should know. Uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> yes, yes, there's a couple of CDs. Sorry. And the quartet. Yeah, Derek does a wonderful, um, has a wonderful jazz quartet. It's played here, actually. The last time we played here, Derek, we were flying back from the States, and it was the time of the, um, the snow. So instead of flying from Chicago, we had to go backwards to Houston and forwards on a Sunday night. We flew all over, without sleeping overnight. Derek came straight from Heathrow to here to do a day with the, the boys and girls here, and um, then did a concert in the evening. You really are a trooper, aren't you? Yes, Fantastic. I, I think Alan had a question. What is the hardest piece you've ever played? Mm. The hardest piece. Um, maybe Claire de Lune? No, not Claire de Lune. <laughs> hard piece, I'm not sure. So, the very interesting thing is um, the things you find hardest, Derek, are atonal music. So, music that doesn't have, like um, music by Schoenberg and Berg and Weber, and that doesn't have a, the sort of structure that traditional music does. So, it might, have, it might be something like this, I don't know. Um, that would be a sort of tone row. And then what we did, we did an experiment, Derek. I played you some uh, Schoenberg tone rows. And what you did, you actually corrected them. <laughs> so um, it, it sounded like Wagner, which was fascinating. So, so what Derek had done, in effect, musically, historically, you, you'd step back from the early 20th century Vienna when all that was happening and step back 50 years into the world of Wagner, which was... Um, advanced tonality, but actually corrected what you perceived to be mistakes, Derek, which I think yeah. was amazing. Yeah. So what happens if I do that now? If I, I've never, I haven't done this, but we'll try. So if I play an imaginary tone ray, like, what do you do with that? Derek, what you did, you took that atonal piece and gradually dragged it into the into sort of early 20th century blues, which was nice. Yeah. Right, any more questions? Yes, more madam. Questions? Yes, I have a question, Derek. You play all the jazz you choose, and I love jazz, but I wondered if you had a favourite classical piece, perhaps. I do, yeah. And which one is that? Um, the air on a G string. The air on a G string. <laughs> Can do the air on a G string. So the air on a G string, but not as Bach wrote it. Not exactly. Okay.
for you, John. Yeah. Um, time for a couple more things. Yes. Uh, Derek, this is a question about your, um, your perfect pitch. Um, I'm, I've got a perfect pitch as well, and this is a question I've always wanted to ask. Um, do you find that different keys and different notes uh, it have different emotional responses? Or how, how do you respond emotionally to different notes and different sounds? Uh, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> not sure, Adam. I'm not sure. But I'm Adam? Okay, that's a really you good explain answer. Explain it, Adam. Could you explain it, sir? Yes. So, I, so if, like you've just done with when we improvise that piece of piece over, um, you improvise it in one key and then you improvise it in another. Um, did that did that music sound any different to you, or, or did did it sound different to me? Yes. Um, how, how? How? What? What? What about it sounded different? Uh, just a pitch or something? Yeah, that's a really good question, a very good answer, Derek. Yeah. yeah. I think one of the great things about having perfect pitch like you, Derek, is that it, it, it adds a greater richness to the music. So, for example, I, I haven't got Derek's ear, but I, I've got perfect pitch for the piano. And interestingly, it's changed over the years, like it does for people. Uh, like me, who develop perfect pitch later on. So everything sounds a semitone out. And so um, the Moonlight Sonata, which is supposed to sound like this, actually, to me, sounds like this. So it's rather weird. Um, and it does have a different emotional color. But I think for you, Derek, although you can't tell us how you feel, I can see from your physicality how much the emotion, how embodied, we'd say, um, the different pitches are. And the great thing is for you, Derek, by playing the same piece in different keys, it's almost like looking at a picture from different angles. So it's the same thing, and yet it has a different emotional resonance. Yeah. yeah. And the lovely thing is, Derek, you, you've never, you've, that's a fantastic answer to a really hard question that you've never done before. So, well done, Derek. Fantastic. Yeah. Time for a couple more thoughts. Couple more yes, thoughts. Adam. Hi, Derek. Hi, Joe. If you were to play the same piece on two different occasions, will it be the same? Uh, it might be the same, Joe. <laughs> Not quite sure, Joe. I think that's absolutely right, Derek. You've got this um, amazing ability, Derek, um, depending on, because we do concerts all over the place with instruments of different qualities. This is the most magnificent Rolls-Royce of an instrument. But sometimes you go to somewhere and like the E flat on the bottom sticks or something. And I'm dreading Derek finding it because I know he's going to become obsessed with that E flat. So every, um, every piece then incorporates a few low E flats. So, but you're also very clever at, sometimes we might go into a care home and not all the notes work. And so Derek instantly rejigs everything to make sure he can play, play the piece by re calibrating uh, the chords and so on. So it's quite intuitive. Um, does how you play depend on your mood, Derek? Does the player depend on my mood? Yes, Adam? There you are. I've heard that thought. How many times? Never the same. But it's, I think that's, people talk about why live music. This is why live music, because um, every event with you, Derek, is unique because we never know what's going to happen. And yet people say exactly what you were saying, John, that people think you have a disability, Derek, but actually ability. your ability is greater than the whole of this room in many ways. And that's, yes. the, that's the crucial thing. Yeah. <laughs> I thought one more question. Yeah. Go well, on. I'd like to try something, which is, okay. um, uh, do you play the same uh, way? Uh, I, I made a request about three weeks ago. Right. Do you play Paganini? I can play Paganini. So I'd like to see if it is, how it differs from the okay. Anthony, that's a horrible question. How would you know? Because you can... <laughs> 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 
I know the principle sure. pretty well. Okay. And I sort of have a memory of what okay. you said last time. A bit of pag, sorry. A bit of Paganini. A bit of Paganini. Yes, Adam. Go on, Anthony. I think it was, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Anthony. Go on, one more question, yeah. It just depends, doesn't it? It depends, doesn't it, Adam? It just depends. It does depend. I think the crucial thing, Derek, and we, um, Caitlin talked about the early years, the crucial thing is that, that, Derek, you did lots of work when you were young, and that set you up, really, for life. So you don't actually practice at all, do you? You just play. I don't practice at all, I just play. Yeah. Yes. Just play. Derek, I was just wondering, could you put a number on how many pieces Stored in your brain. Just a minute, I'm going to have a look. <laughs> you know what? We don't know. And it's important because as soon as you say, Derek, like, like what you did earlier with playing a piece, Derek can play it. So it's impossible to say, but it must be hundreds of thousands of pieces. And the extraordinary thing is that we do a concert and someone will request something. I, I don't know, I've never heard Derek play it. And you'll just play it. I think in your head, Derek, you have the music streaming. I have the music streaming. And in a way, you, you just play what you hear. Yeah. Fun. Yes. Uh, maybe the answer is yes, but uh, uh, do you compose as well? I like do compose, yes. Yeah, improvise, yeah. I can improvise, yes. If you can write it down, then that will be a composition. Yeah. Right. Genuinely, the last question, yes. Um, I just want to say, I'm currently studying on the Sanskrit Sankos, which is run by Adam and Caitlin. And in our lectures on Thursday, we actually watched a video of their film And I just want to say that it's such an honour, Derek, to see you see you play live and I'm so glad I came here today. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Great, listen, we're going to finish with Flight of the Bumblebee. Should we do that? We'll do Flight of the Bumblebee. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think the director of the Wimbledon Festival should decide which note Derek's going to start on. Come play a note, Anthony. Just play any note. Go on. I've always wanted to do this to Anthony. <laughs> Somewhere up here, because it's a high piece. Any note. 
Right, Flight of the Bumblebee! so much um listen we'll, we'll we'll be around having a sandwich so if you want to come and catch up with derek you'd like that wouldn't I would you like that adam yeah yes so thank you very much thank you very much